Oh, hi there, guys. Bees are thirsty. I can't imagine why. I put all that dry sugar in there yesterday in their hives. Huh. Imagine that. They got thirsty. Yep. Coming in to get some water. It's about 60 degrees in sunny, sunny Florida. Yeah. Thought I'd show you that. I'm out here today getting into some mischief. It's my job, you know, to stay in mischief. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, this big old wasp that boring holes into all your wooden stuff. They used to tear this stuff up. Matter of fact, I had cypress rocking chairs all in here at one time, and they were just chewing them up until I put in this device here. No more. They all went away. Imagine that. Oh, uh, I'm playing with wood today. Let me shut this noisy fan off for a second so you can see what I'm up to. Oh, look at weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, this is the second bow I'm working on. I have uh, already 45 I've already 45 the edges on this side. And now I've got to come over here and 45 the edges on this side. And when you 45 these edges on this bamboo, do not bring your file this way. Work this way out. And here's the tool I use for that operation. It's called a, a Nicholson number 50. Where is it made? Brazil. Huh. So let's see, they're kicking our ass in the file industry and also the honey operation. I got bees flying all over the place today. I'll tell you what. I was out there earlier harvesting um, berries and they didn't like me out there just as I was finishing up stripping all the le berries off that tree and then I was going to go around and, and prune it. Uh, I didn't get to the pruning stage because I did not want to guys get in a full-blown bee suit to do, do that. They were kicking. I took about 20 stings before I said, you know, you need to stop and get away from them before they cover your butt up. So I did that. So you get away from when they get mean. But yeah, here's my Nicholson rasp. That's how you work these down, these bows. This is a very cool and fun project. Here's my other bow, finished bow. And what I wanted to show you too on stringing these, I made this little stringing device here. So this is just nothing more than a paracord right here. And I made a little small pocket. I just took, a, went to the craft store and bought some leather, you know, scrap remnants. And I just cut a piece and folded it over and then I stitched it, melted a hole through with a heat gun and then put this, put this paracord on. Now, you never want to, do you see the guys putting these things through their legs and all this? And No, don't, don't do that. Do not do that. You're going to break your bow. You don't want to break your bow. You put all this time and effort into it. You don't want to break it. So this is the top, or that, or the, the uh, backing. This is the belly of the bow. This is points downward. And you put your string on. You're going to make this string too, by the way. This is a Flemish twist string. And what I did here. To keep it kind of snug, I took some dental floss and put it in with a needle and, and got it to where it's snug. You can still take it on and off, but it's snug there so it'll stay. And so what you do is you put the, the little end, you got a little end here, you put it over here on the top. And the reason you want the little end there, that exposes this knock here. And then you take the big cup end 
you make another cup that's got a bigger you got a bigger cup on it you put it here on this end look at these bees following me around aren't they nuts all right now what you're going to do is put your foot put your foot in that in that uh, on that paracord and you're going to lift up make sure these don't pop off the end lift up and bring it down and hook it in and that's it and all I do is guesstimate on the brace height as I do this to where my finger just touching and what I do to to either stretch it out make it longer or shorter you just take this off take your string back off you're gonna lift up lift up the bow let her down let the top let the top of your bow this is gonna be a little bit bigger loop you're gonna put on the on the top just let it slide down on the bow itself now you can take this off, come down here, and you can slip this string off. And if you want to shorten it, you go counterclockwise a few turns, and then you slip it back on. You slip it back on and make sure it's in the slot. And then you restring it, and then you recheck your brace height. So that's it. So on this bow here, over here, I've got to do this tapering action. I'm going to put. I like this handle craziness I put on here. I like that. We're gonna we're gonna do more of that. And uh, so I got You got to taper it and feather this in. You got to 45 these edges. And you fortify, fortify these edges. And that's how you get that bow where you need it. Then you take a chainsaw file. You're going to take a chainsaw file. And you're going to cut in these knocks. And you're going to start here by going down one inch one inch and you make a mark so I'm not ready to cut these in yet because I'm 45 this back side here but I, all I got to do is come down here and put a line right here right at one inch And then you're going to 45 from there. You can eyeball a 45 downward. Like so. bees are loving me today guys I guess either that or they want to kill me one or the other okay that's it you'll notice that this bow you sight down through here you see how that thing's curved that's the way I glued it up if you guys are interested how to glue one of these up and and, and you know and uh, check this how this how this build goes
we can go through the whole process. But this makes a pretty cool bow. This thing is Ipe, which is Brazilian mahogany. This be this belly wood is Brazilian, and it's five sixteenths thick all the way through. And what you do is you take your bamboo and you thin it to one eighth of an inch thick first, all the way through on a sander. Just a cheap, you could just use a cheap Harbor Freight belt sander that you clamp to a bench. You take your bamboo where where uh, lung protection, a respirator is best. Just like you do when you're vaping your bees, use one of them cheap Harbor Freight respirators because this stuff is like fiberglass you don't want it in your lungs and that I glued this on with Urac uh, 1, uh, 185 Urac 185 it is a formaldehyde glue and it's used was used back exclusively in the banjo violin um, guitar business gluing up instruments is the same glue that that used on these bows and it was used on these bows forever the howard hill the old famous trick shooter howard hill he loved bamboo that's what he shot you can still buy their bows i guess from what i understand and uh they're still doing it the same way uh with bamboo and an underlayment you can get a variety you can you can use hickory there's a variety of woods but this Ipe is it, it's a really tough wood. It's an excellent wood for this application. But if you can buy these kits. They're, they're quite, I don't know, I, I would say they're expensive. They're, you're up there, buck, buck, 50, 75, something like that or more for a kit for these things. But you can build this bow for a little of nothing. I mean, but the new glue on these, they phased out URAC 185 for whatever reason. It may be toxic. And they're using uh, Unibond 800 now. If you go out there, uh, I forget the name of the company. It's a paint company that sells it. But if you go out and Google Unibond 800, it's basically the same material, the glue. And that's you can use Smooth On. The same material, it's a epoxy, but you've got to have a heat box with that, I think, to get it right. This Unibond in Urac was an air air cured deal, and you just it's room temperature, and it's a very forgiving glue. But uh, you can see how this thing, well, this thing was glued up when I put it in the jig. I put it on a, in, in a jig just a flat board and you rough up these pieces the you tooth use a toothing plane which is nothing more than I used as a uh, saber saw blade a coarse saber saw blade sandwiched between two pieces of uh, I have to watch this void right here I've seen I've seen a little a little void right there I'll have to eyeball that on final deal. I may have to run a little bit of glue in there. I'm not sure how that, how or why that happened. But uh, I will fix that. But you rough them up with a toothing plant each piece. The top of this and the bottom of this bamboo was roughed up. This piece here and this piece here was roughed up. And you can see, actually, my crosshatch marks in there. I extended out past with that. Both pieces. And then you stack them up on a straight plane. And then I put a piece of wood. I clamped it down in the center. I had, like, five C-clamps in the center. I put a two by four, a good straight two, a two by six, what I did between two sawhorses to do this. That way I could get my clamps under here. This would be just hanging out. And I could get my, I had a two by six under here and put that on. I can clamp it up. One clamp, C clamp here, one over on this side, back and forth. I had like six of them here. 
and the rest of this was all done with spring clamps. You just to squeeze cheap $2 spring clamps you get at Harbor Freight. When you're all done, you get this thing all clamped up. You take, I took about, I think it was four inch, four or six inch, I forget now which. And I brought up each end. It's clamped down in the center, it can't get away from you. You clamp that first, then you raise up the ends. That gives you this, that gives you that bow in that thing. You want that bow because if you just did it flat straight, when you shoot at this thing with a hundred arrows in it, it starts to come back down just like this bow here. This bow here had that same amount of, of twist in it. As you can see, it's still got a little bit, but after you shoot a hundred arrows through it, it doesn't come completely straight. Completely straight would be back this way. It's still got a little bit of arc like you see. Slight. But if you just did it flat, this thing would, would uh, have too much string follow. In other words, it would come back after you shot it through a hundred arrows through it. It'd have a tendency to go this way. You don't want that. You want it to come back, spring back. That's the reason you kick up these ends when you glue them up. Just like that. It's a very simple uh, design, clever design. The guy that made the template that I bought, I think I showed you that template. It's the, the length of this thing, by the way. Let's get a length on it for you. I think it's 72 inches. Yes. This thing is 72 inches. And with that 72 inches and this taper that the guy made with that template that I bought, you end up, and with these thicknesses, you end up with a 45 pound bow, give or take. So he, hit, he figured it out, the taper and the length of this bow and the thicknesses to come out to a 45 pound bow, which is probably all, you know, plenty of bow. I mean, the air is just full of bees today, guys. I mean, they are going crazy today. They're not vicious, but I'll tell you what, you get back at that tree back there where I was working and they're, they're going to try to eat you alive. So, you know, I'm just sitting here fooling around. When you guys get retired like me, you need to have you need to have projects like this to keep you out of trouble. So, you can come out on your front porch, drink your green tea with all my uh, special tinctures in there and work on projects like this keep yourself busy get out there and get that hike in every day and work on these projects do hunting and fishing we got a lot of hunting and fishing to do yet and uh, today wasn't a day for hunting and fishing so i'm working on these projects here uh, don't be watching television because there's a lot of bad stuff on tv i was uh, was in there yesterday or day before and I had to be clicking around I think it was, it was Friday and I was having lunch and I flipped on TV and I was surfing through and I came across this show called The View and uh, they were screaming and yelling and this and that on that thing and, and what I gathered from the whole show they have like four or five left wingers totally off the wall uh crazy left wingers and then they ha they'll throw in to the mix a right winger uh and they just try to chew him up like a, a, a him or her like a bulldog you know 
and they're having fun with it. And on the far end, if you look at this this thing, I call it a thing because I don't really even know what it is, guys. I don't know if it's male or female. I, I, I don't know, but it's usually on that left side as you're looking at the screen. Uh, they, they call it, uh, I could say it, like I could say because I don't know what sex it is. A uh, Whoopi Goldberg. And, uh, the, you know, I... I'm not afraid of grizz bears, guys. Let me tell you something. But that thing scares me. It really does. And, and the foul mouth on that thing is just unbelievable. And uh, so I just, you know, try to stay away from the TV and, and do projects like this, you know, to where you don't get high blood pressure and uh, get yourself all worked up. And... Uh, like I said, I, I leave a comment below if you know what sex that is, because I, I, you know, I really don't care, but I'm just curious, you know. And uh, speaking of sex, I, what happened to Bruce Jenner? I mean, good, good Lord, what are the left-wing people thinking these days? That's all. It seems to be going on the left. It, it don't now they're saying, don't. Uh, let the let the children decide what sex they are, okay? Uh, are you kidding me? Are you are you freaking kidding me? Okay, let let me tell you something, Bruce, Caitlin, or whatever. Take all your clothes off, stand in front of a vanity mirror or something, and take a look. And if you can't, you don't believe what you see in the mirror. Look, just look down, okay? And if you've got a penis down there, you're a boy. And if you've got a vagina down there, you're a girl. Okay. And don't worry about it. Just take that ball and run with it. Okay? For the rest of your life. I just can't believe what's going on. And uh, Bruce, I want to know one thing. Or, or Caitlin. <clears throat> I want to just know one thing. Who in the hell is going to date you? All right? Who's going to who's going to treat you like a Miss Daisy? That's what I want to know. All right, guys. I just thought I'd throw that one out there at you because try to stay away from TV and get yourself a project like this. Enjoy, enjoy some green tea. Don't get on the crack cocaine like them people are on the left. I think that's what they're on. You got to be, you got to be to be thinking like that. I mean, changing sexes and stuff just blows my mind. You know, I old Steve has been around fooling with nature his entire life, and and I learned at a very young age raising animals, you have males and you have females. You know, I mean, this isn't rocket science, folks. I'm telling you. All right, I hope I didn't pop your bubble out there, guys. Enjoy your day. Uh, if you can, get out and work them bees and uh, get yourself a project like making bow and arrows. Very cool. Keep yourself in shape, too, pulling on them things. And I, Oh, by the way, I took off that sight on this thing. I was out there playing with it a while ago, and I said, you know, you're cheating. You're cheating, Steve-O, playing with sights on a longbow. If you want sights, pick up your compound bow. So I took the sight off, and guess what? I'm shooting better without. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm getting closer to that bullseye. It's shooting instinctively than I am fooling around with a sight pin on this bow. So all right, guys, don't worry about sex changes and all that. I just thought I'd throw that one out there at you, and uh, be safe, be happy, and be strong, because we got to keep getting it on. See you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. Finished her up. I got a little energetic there. I didn't build the string yet. I pulled this string off my other bow. And uh, you string it up and you sight down through. You want to make sure that your string goes straight through that handle and straight up the center of each limb. It does. This is only the second one I built. Uh... What can I say about it? It's a sweet shooter. Okay, that's all I can say. It's got a bulbous handle right now. That bulbous handle 
comes in with your with your pattern the pattern that template pattern it's got that bulbous action in it already okay and uh, to get this fade the fade you remember how it was it was just came straight out all you do is take your uh, your uh, Nicholson number 50 and you just keep working on it don't dig into this over here just keep going until it gets right down close now there's still scratches in it I'll probably just leave the scratches in I hit it good with a foam block there's no snags or anything on it there's some roughness to it like me there's roughness okay so I may leave that this is going to be a great hog killer and I may not put that handle on. What I did was put this glove on. It's just a mechanic glove. I shoot a long arm guard, by the way. I've had this arm guard for probably, oh, I don't know. I'll bet it's going on 30 years. The only thing it didn't have in it was, uh, it was, it didn't have any reinforcement in here, right in here. So what I did, I went to the hardware store. My buddy and I both bought one at the same time. We bought them in an archery shop supply store in, in, in Michigan. I think it was Gaylord. This thing would flex. Well, when you bundle it up, you're hunting in Michigan, freezing weather, you got a bunch of clothes on. This thing was bulging straight way out. No good. So what, what we did, we came in, we put a little knife slit in both things and we put some square stock rod all the way down in here and then we well, we stitched it up so that's what we got this thing guys shoots where you're looking i'm only shooting at eight yards but look at the shots here and i was aiming for here this guy got a little squirrely over here but i've only shot 10 arrows through this bow I've only shot 10 arrows through this bow at eight yards. So what we got to do is practice, obviously, and get better. But th this is a very, very uh, forgiving bow. This thing is very forgiving. And I can tell you how forgiving. <laughs> I picked this thing up. I shot a couple arrows, right? And I didn't know if this thing was going to explode on me or not. You're always a little puckered up when you're 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 shooting a, a bow for the first time, right? You're shooting a bow for the very first time, and you don't know if it's going to explode on you or not. So you're a little puckered, right? But I, as much as I shot that other one, and this this bow here is identical to it, I can feel a little roughness in here yet. Right in there. I gotta work on it with some more sandpaper. And I'll probably do it while it's strung up. I'll just work on it while it's strung up and just sand it good with a with a foam block. I'll probably do that. I gotta build a string for this one. That won't take me long. But I've got enough material to build about five more of these bows. And uh you know if we ever get a uh a left-wing president in, in, in an office that wants to take all of our, our, our guns away. We'll just build these, right? We'll just build these and then when, when crap hits the fan and they're coming at us full bore, we'll make them all look like porcupines. How's that, guys? Just kidding. Uh, fun toy. Fun toy, fun project. Uh, what you want to do on these, once you build your bow come in you'll see right here I put a mark that's eight inches from this fade right here eight inches over and then you take your tape measure and come on the inside say get your tape measure over toward the handle and measure up on five and three eighths do the same thing over here on this side it comes out to exactly five and three eighths so it doesn't matter which end I make top or bottom. I can just pick now. But what before I do that, I'm going to shoot about 100 arrows through this bow and remeasure. My brace height is a little 
a little on the weak. I gotta, I gotta get a little higher. But what I'll do is shoot this bow, get a good hundred arrows through it. Uh, I had that little spot on here, right here. And I may podge a little five minute epoxy in that little crack. It may not do anything. But let me tell you what I did. I was out here, I shot three arrows through this thing. And, and then I, I, I just picked it up and came to my cheek, to my anchoring point. And now what I'm doing to shoot, shoot this bow, whenever I shoot my, uh, my uh, switchback uh, bow, I used to shoot with a, with a release, a finger release. Actually, I used a Scott release. It had a big hand grip with a trigger on it, okay? But ever since I was a kid, I always shot split fingers. That's where you're putting an arrow. You knock it, and you put your arrow like this. Now I'm doing, just for fun, I started doing this. I'm putting three fingers under my knock. I love it. I take this index finger right here when I'm, when I'm shooting and I come to full draw. I'm hooking it right here in the corner of my mouth. That's the way I've always shot, but I've always shot split fingers. But now I'm shooting three under, but I still put this in the corner of my mouth. And you stare at that point you want to hit. Well, I'll tell you how forgiving this bow is and how strong this bow is. After I shot about five arrows, I picked it up and I came to full draw with no arrow in it, mind you. No arrow in this bow. And something told me to release. Yeah, I went brain dead for a second and I released. Well, that's called dry fire. And normally when you dry fire a bow, it will explode. <sighs> And when I, when I did it, I said, you flippin' idiot, to myself. I haven't, I haven't, done, I haven't done a dry fire in, in, in forever that I can remember. I dry fired this boat, guys. It should have exploded. And after I did it, I said, oh, man, you've ruined this bow. So I started flexing it, flexing it. This bow is tougher than nails. This bow is tough. Because it would have... No wonder... No wonder Howard Hill loved these bows. This is all he shot. He was a trick shooter. He went all over the friggin' world killing big animals and stuff. Elephants and you name it with a bow similar to this. It wasn't 45 pounds. He was probably shooting 60, 70, 80 pounds when he's going after lions and whatevers. But yeah, you talk about a sweet shooting, forgiving bow. It shoots where you're looking. Don't you just love it? I'll catch you guys on the next one. Be happy. Bye-bye.